Bless up, family. Bless up, Team Rebel. Uh, bless up, bless up, bless up. How y'all doing this Sunday morning? I'm out here in the city, you know, uh, taking care of some business, grocery shopping, watching the doing my chores, things of that nature. Uh, I'm ready to get my oil change ready to live whenever these fools come on. So if I just so happy to hear some people talking in the background, my apologies, my humble apologies. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the video we're going to look at now is long overdue. It was the video I was telling y'all about that had uh, 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 Rowdy Rowdy Piper, the former wrestler. I believe he may be dead, no longer living with the living. But uh, his, uh, his spirit, you know, uh, things he was kicking in this video, uh, like I said, it was a movie that he he played in, came out in the late 80s, called uh, They Live. And um, it's still, it was... John Carpenter, I believe it was his name who directed it, but the but the but the gist of the movie is about um world domination, one controlled government. Uh they talked about drones, talked about man control, um and how they man control you, just different little things like that. And it just is really concrete and fits today's narrative and the, the things that we got going on out in the world. Uh so without further ado, let me get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. It's like 14 minutes long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show this video. I'm going to also either somehow I'm going to try to get a, a link of the the full interview. It's like 40 some odd minutes. If y'all want to check that out, uh, you can. If not, appreciate it. Take your time. Come through and watch my video uh, once again. Uh, let me give you the fair act use. These are for learning, teaching, principles only. So, yeah, let's get to it. We didn't make a statement about that. And they live is partially a political statement. It's partially uh, a tract on the world that we live in today. And as a matter of fact, right now, it's even more true than it was then. Uh, we are manipulated by a lot of media around us. We are consumed by consumerism. And uh, as you can see, the recent events in this country, they are still among us. They do live, indeed. It's uh, really interesting. The, uh, the movie they live when it was made was more about Reaganomics at the time. But with the... Uh, as the music lulls you to sleep in conspiracies, one of the things that the movie has done is it's taken on a life of its own. Uh, it never gets old as we see the world evolve uh, and try to make us a little chip. Uh, same thing's happening over and over again. You watch They Live and it gives you, it's kind of, it's kind of like the uh, cliff notes for what's going on. They, you know, uh, John Carpenter, when uh, we shot the scene with the homeless people, he actually used the homeless people there. John is a big activist, you know, and I give him all the respect in the world for that. Uh, and, you know, turning out and showing what the world's become. I don't know why America has homeless people. It's, uh, it's terrible, but uh, this is the kind of thing that needs to be exposed to America. Uh, they need to know, you know, they're trying to put us to sleep. I'm a born rebel. You know what, uh, with they live in the mind control and everything that's going on, there's one thing that uh, that can escape people. If you don't have somebody personal to you that has been harmed by not only by the conspiracies and all the tributaries that lead to that or uh, run off that, if you don't have someone close to you shaking at nighttime because he got blown up twice, went over again and got blown up two times, then it doesn't mean so much to you. You know, every time we want to go to war, we send your boy to war. My boy's already been there. And it, and it becomes with the mind control, trying to dumb down the society, uh, drugging society. 
very good hearted. It's just the extremists for the people that are running and pushing the buttons. Um, I think that uh, they want one governmental force to, to govern, govern the world. Uh, it's just that everybody's got their own agenda. You can't get that done unless Gandhi's around. You can't. You, 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 we can't get everybody on the same page. Well, another idea is if we all spoke the same language, it'd be kind of cool. Because the communication is gone. Uh, and then we can't tell when they say obey. You know, we were mad at Russia for how long? But if, I've been there. And they're pretty nice people. They don't want to go over the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. If you go back and look at it, Russia didn't want to start a nuclear war. By the way, this video was is from uh, September, I believe, either 9th or 13th, 2013. And just the way how, you know, with the passion and the conviction and everything that he's, he's saying, I mean, it still today has concrete because it's just like ain't nothing changing. Ain't nothing changing. Just more of the more of the shit that they put in the movies and these uh, they what they call propaganda and conspiracies and all this shit that they came up with. You know, in the 80s and the 70s, it's just, it's just coming to life now in the 2000s. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, let me get back to it. Pretty good people around the world. So, what is the world trying to evolve to? We have so many different people, and there's zero population that's not, uh, has not happened yet. And we're growing and growing like China. What are you doing, China? The same in Syria. What's China doing? Sending our boys. Somebody else sending our boys. What's the UN doing? So what? What? What do I believe is trying to happen? I believe that a lot of people with their own agendas are trying to come around and make one government to govern the entire world. They're, they're targeting the kids um, and they're telling them how to think. Uh, they're dumbing them down in school. For instance, when my kids. Uh, were in school, they had like no paper days. They didn't have paper to write on because of a shortage. Or they pull the teachers. And that's a real heat getter for a dad who makes a living uh, wrestling with his body. When I go to feed my family, and all of a sudden you've got a school that has no paper for my kids. So why do you have no paper? Well, you see, it all, it all starts with the kids. And as you get older and a little wiser, you're harder to fool. But you put up another pop idol for the kids. Put up, put up another uh, uh, piece of music that maybe isn't. But, uh, let me pause that right there because everything he said right there, concrete. It all starts with the kids because kids they don't learn hate. Oh, excuse me, they're not born with hate. They they've taught they're taught it. They learn it from. The surroundings and from TV and the parents, you know what I'm saying? Um, and like he said, the music. Look at look at what we got going on now. The culture of our music, you know what I'm saying? My God, are you serious? They even they even started, uh, you know, putting putting stuff in the Disney film. I know y'all done seen the. Um, it was a either something on Nickelodeon or on Disney where it was like. Uh, Two, it was like a little black boy and a little black girl that was on their way home from school and uh, like a gang of white boys they had on like um, leather jackets they roughed them up first they beat up the brother and then they turned around he took out running left his little sister they had uh they made it seem like you know they was going they was gonna sexually assault her but they ended up taking like a little spray can of uh, it was white paint and uh you know uh, sprayed a, a face white crying and things like that but you know this is the stuff that they put down here on tv like come on man well, let's get back to it let's get back to it. It, it's nothing but uh vulgarity for the kids you know bang it in between uh about i think early 60s they had a tv called the brunswick and uh the people that bought it dad would go to work mom would be there and dad would come back home and all of a sudden she bought 20 pounds of dog food but they don't have a dog. And they found out that there was a little button in a TV called the Brunswick. And when the commercials came on, they did something that shot out these waves and made you buy. That's 
that TV stuff, that's crazy. Like, if you think about it, they was tr doing mad control through the TV. It had a button that, that, you know, was being pressed. Just thinking all these damn new wave TVs and things that they got going on. And, you know, with the TVs, all these different buttons and colors. You pressing them and shit. And you're like, what does this do? It don't do nothing. You do, what does this do? It don't do nothing. And it tell you it to sync this stuff. Or That's, come on, man. What if it's doing something doing something to you what if it's doing something to your mind you know what i'm saying making you react on info oh i got another video about sports you best believe oh if i got time today i'm on it i'm on it. what time is it oh yeah let's get back to it and i'm not afraid to speak out uh but these are my children and you say what do i worry about my children and i have my grandchildren and I'm very worried about them because the earth is not stable right now. Uh, first of all, as, uh, just before the break, you were saying, like, why does it, why does it uh, control some people? And why does somebody like myself or maybe Sean, it doesn't control? Um, and with They Live, the character Nada was based very much on my life. Uh, I don't come from any place. I, don't, I was born in a place called Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, coldest place on earth. And I was moved all over the world till I was 13 and I went off by myself. And then I got into a business with no rules. Uh, pro wrestling at 15, no rules at all. You can do the only, the only thing is, you know, you had to survive it. Um, so I, I, wa I wasn't raised under the institution. I, I, I wasn't uh, there to program every day. They got, you know, they got to hit you every day. I understand on the signs, but in my particular case, my, my job was to make you angry. And so I was doing a lot of subliminal things uh, in my interviews. And from my own business, I know... It was, it, he had did something. I believe he was wrestling in the WWE against Bad News Brown, I think. I think I may have his name wrong. One of my... One of the old heads, they know, but it was a WrestleMania pro promo. It was a WrestleMania uh, SummerSlam, but he was wrestling in a black wrestler. And um, this is another reason that I don't fool with wrestling no more. I had lost respect for him, honestly, for uh, for, for Roddy Piper. Um, he had did, like, black face paint. He had, like, an alter ego to wear. He would uh, dress up like a black man. Painting itself down the middle black. And it was like one side was Roddy and the other side was, you know, yeah. Okay, back to it. Oh, what it is to control somebody. It's like when, they, when the radio first came out and people that would sit by the radio and like, when that, what was it, Sea Biscuit would listen to the race or, or Joe Lewis would smell uh, Max. Uh, smelling, uh, well, I can't remember the other guy's name. The boxing. Boxing. Yeah. 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 They would all tune into the radio because it was like this unbelievable device. And then when television came on, the, one of the hottest shows was pro wrestling. Because it was easily produced and it went, it's an international language. But within my ranks, there are no rules. So you can't program me. And then once you get a little older and I've seen people that are programmed, you learn how they do that. And it becomes evident that uh, the different things that they do in the government, questions you're not allowed to have. The discourse is always they, right? And the funny thing is, they live. Who is they? People always say, who is they? You know, the conspiracy theorists are always saying they. And what, what's interesting about what you're saying and what Rod, and said, what Rod was saying, all of us, I think, come across this this corruption at some point in our lives, right? And it's it's not just it the fact that traveling is amazing. Obviously, when you get fresh with the streets, it's amazing. But at the end of the day, we all come across corruption. We all see the corruption in the police force. We all see corruption in schools, in our own family, right? The question is, do we go along to get along, or do we start to point it out? Now, those of us who are not, we're more inclined for justice and whatnot, we want to see the, the, the good thing happen. But there's still this, this factor in the film that we haven't talked about yet, and that is... There are sociopaths. There are people as part of the population that are, that are that have no emotion. They are not human. And I think the human race that has not yet come to terms with the fact that there are 10% of the population that are sociopathic, that do not have human emotion or boundaries, and they are not human. So when we say, hey, we'll give him a pass, he's human, hey, he can, you know, he, he made a mistake, we're, we're not understanding that fundamentally the thing we're talking about is a small percentage of the population.
person that does not care about humanity. Um, you have to live within the system to be programmed. You they have to at least get to you, your senses, in some way. And if they don't know where you are, and they don't know how, like I didn't have an, until I was 19 years old, nobody knew I was alive. I didn't have a social security number, I didn't have any passport, I didn't have anything. Um, and so I was this kid that uh, would do whatever I needed to do that the guys, the, the older pro wrestlers would tell me to do. It's one of those things that, like, with they live with the conspiracies, you know, and tying that all in, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go deep, you have to have the courage to dive in and the faithless. You don't understand real programming, nor how ugly, how ugly that gets. Interaction with it is him, I'm sure he came across some interesting discussions as to what he thought, you know, who, who they really are, and if, does he really believe that they, that they are aliens? Yeah. Uh, they was the propaganda the world was shoving down our throats. Um, but John and I, we, we talked a lot before we made this movie. I took it real serious. And, um, you know, I don't want to speak for John, but just the way I remember it, I don't think we're the only living uh, source of energy in the universe uh, by any means at all. Um, and there's big committees right now getting together. And saying, talking about um, people, far, excuse me, uh, things from other planets, aliens, whatever you want to call them, Paul Waits, Greys, reptiles. Uh, and we, we weren't that detailed with it, but John and I both agreed that we don't think that we're alone in the universe. And, and I think that, that I ran across a doctor friend of mine who didn't agree with me at all. And I found that amazing that uh, an educated man like that would not. Um, would not see that far, but maybe, you know what, maybe I'm the crazy one, I don't know there. Well, I think the world, you know what, I think, I think that, I think the world, the real men of the world have to stand up and say, I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out the bubblegum. Time to take a stand, boys. You know what, you got a little courage. Stand up for yourself. Oh, bunch of snooty miners, and that you're over in Syria? Trash, 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 trash. 